Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops Cold War In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Pellington Sniper Rifle, which thankfully was quite easy to play with. The Pellington is a good sniper rifle, and it's clearly designed for quick scoping in 6v6, or at least fast sniping. I'm usually really bad at sniping in Call of Duty games. It's just the type of playstyle that I very rarely want to engage in. However, I'm blessed that in Black Ops Cold War, sniping is relatively easy, so even I, a lowly sniping peasant, was able to get good gameplay for today's in depth. Moving along, I think the Pellington's not bad for Warzone either, at least for the in-game fights. It fills a similar role as the Car 98, kind of a fast sniper rifle, and if you're going to be playing Warzone or Black Ops Cold War, you could support me by using code DRIFTER in the Creator Code store if you're going to be buying microtransactions of any kind. In order to make it work, it has to be in all caps, and that O is like a numerical zero. So let's move into the stats of the Pellington, and I'll tell you why I think it's a pretty solid weapon. The Pellington bullet velocity is 500 meters per second, which which is the slowest of all sniper rifles, and that makes sense because it is the lowest caliber of all sniper rifles. But what doesn't make sense is that sniper rifles in Black Ops Cold War have less bullet velocity than assault rifles, light machine guns, and tack rifles, and even some submachine guns if you put the velocity boosting barrels on there. The overall bullet velocity might feel pretty fast and snappy, but numerically speaking, it's actually quite slow, which was a little bit shocking. And I wanted to give you a slow motion comparison between the maximum and minimum bullet velocity with the minimum being on the left, the Pellington with a suppressor, and the maximum being on the right, well actually not the, the second closest to maximum, I'm running the Tiger Team barrel which is going to be the one I'm going to be recommending, but you can see a pretty tremendous difference between the two, how much longer it takes for the bullet to hit, and of note even when testing this I accidentally was not able to hit the target because with the suppressor the bullet drop was so significant. Idle Sway can't be reduced as much in this game as past Call of Duty games. We can reduce flinch a lot, which I'll show you in a second, but Idle Sway is relatively fixed. Here's a comparison between the base Idle Sway of the Pellington, the Pellington with a stabilizer equipped, which is one of the first attachments you'll unlock, and then the infantry stabilizer, which reduces Idle Sway more than anything else, and in my opinion, there's not a tremendous amount of difference between these two. I still run stabilizers because having an uncontrollable idle sway is one of the biggest problems with sniping, or especially if you're going to do it quickly or quick scope, those little micro movements can really screw up your aim. So even small improvements here are important, but you can't make it perfectly stable like you could in Modern Warfare 2019. As we were talking earlier about flinch, flinch is overall very low in this game, however it could be almost nothing with the airborne elastic wrap. Here's again a comparison of the Pellington with no attachments and the base flinch. I'm getting shot four times by an XM4 versus with the airborne wrap which is a 90% flinch reduction. And you see with that particular wrap I pretty much just eat bullets, like I don't even care, I don't even flinch, I don't even move, and since 99% of people are going to be running that attachment, that's mostly what you're going to be dealing with when you're sniping or fighting other snipers. Now after all of that's out of the way, let's talk about the damage on this weapon. The Pellington base damage is 110 per shot, which is actually not enough to get a one-shot kill in a game where there's 150 health, but you do have body multipliers in varying degrees that'll increase the damage depending on where you hit the enemy. So the one-shot kill areas are the head, neck, and chest. And that's it. The head, their neck, or their upper chest, and that's kind of like boobs up, that's pecs and up, that uh, torso where your abs were, the groin area, the even the forearms aren't going to do it. You can clip shoulders in this game. Shoulders count as part of chest, but it's an overall pretty narrow one-shot kill area, so you need to aim high. If you're running the Tiger Team barrel, you do get a one-shot kill area bonus of the upper arms, which is the bicep, so it's a little bit more forgiving if you're clipping people and their arms kind of sticking out sideways for the gun. It is not the forearm arms or hands, but just kind of like that bicep muscle area will get you a one-shot kill. And the suppressor one-shot kill areas appear to be the same as the base weapon. I was not able to test for a difference on these, and that was true of all sniper rifles. The suppressor doesn't say it lowers damage, and it pretty much lines up with what it says in the stats. So when it comes right down to it, with the Pellington Sniper Rifle, regardless of what attachment set you're running, you should be aiming for chest up. Going for body shots is not going to work unless you're in hardcore, or unless you know for a fact the enemy is already injured. Pellington rate of fire is 54 rounds per minute, which is about one shot per second, and it's slow, and it needs to be rechambered, kind of like pump shotguns you can shoot 
and then sprint away really quickly if you're scared, but you'll need to rechamber the weapon before it can be fired again. And that's something that I don't do. I don't snipe a whole lot in Call of Duty, so that little bit took a long time for me to learn and get used to. It wasn't something that came naturally, so if you're not if you're not sniping very often, do take a little bit of time to practice and maybe sometimes wait a little bit before you sprint off so you can get that shot rechambered for the next time you need it. Time to kill isn't very important here. I'm just going to say you better get the one shot kill because it's going to take you a whole second to follow up with your next shot, which you should be dead by then, unless you're fighting brain dead enemies. I, I guess I've shot a few people here, so I was fighting a few brain deads myself, but you really should be going for one shot kills. When it comes to handling stats, the Pellington has an aim down sights time of 550 milliseconds, but a sprint out time of 266 milliseconds. What this means is that the aim down sights time is going to be slower than you think because Black Ops Cold War snipers are so strong. And I think the number one reason they're strong is because of that flinch that we saw earlier. But the game, at least when you're playing it against snipers, feels like they can snap onto you really quickly. They can quick scope you really easy and that they're crazy fast. The numerical reality behind it is that that isn't true. In reality, the sniper rifles do aim down sights quite slowly. You can put several attachments on there to make it faster, but it's still not super duper fast. Interestingly, on the Pellington, sprint out to hip fire is twice as fast as your aim down sights time. So in theory, you could hip fire at people pretty quickly and I guess hit them. If it, It's kind of like Schrodinger's hip fire. When I try to hip fire, when an enemy surprises me and I turn and shoot hip fire, I will absolutely never hit no matter what. But man, if I rush up on a noob that couldn't hit the broadside of the barn, he'll just turn and like from 30 feet away hip fire me with the sniper rifle is how it feels in this game. Overall, not a good strategy, but it's one that you can do. On the topic of hip fire, sniper rifle hip fire is a colossal 18 milliradians, which is just shy of two and a half times the assault rifle hip fire. It's really, really huge, really, really high. Not a whole lot you can do to make that better. Base reload time on the Pellington is 5.1 seconds if you're putting in the shell one at a time and then rechamber the round. It can be very, very slow. However, it's going to vary a lot based on attachments. You can have extended mags, you can have like a fast bolt, you can have, uh, I guess, fast hands. You just put the bullets in really fast. There's a couple of magazine attachments that allow you to reload mag style. And they do a whole lot of interesting and different things. So I think you should kind of sort through and pick the one that you like the best. But personally, I usually don't run any of the good magazine attachments because they slow down my aim down sights time too much. Most of the magazine attachments that I'm really attracted to that I really want to put on my gun have an aim down sights time penalty which is one of the few things that this weapon has going for it in 6v6 multiplayer. So I really don't like to take that ADS penalty at all, even if it's just 5 or 6%. When it comes down to it, the Pellington is the best sniper rifle for 6v6 multiplayer because it's lightweight and relatively snappy. It's got the overall best handling stats of all of the sniper rifles in Black Ops Cold War, and not tremendously so. As you'll see when we get to the Tundra and M82 episodes, this one's only a little bit faster than the others, but those little bits of faster do add up when you start adding attachments that make it faster even still and reduce your aim down sights time more and more and more. So if you're really like hitting this weapon out, it can be snappier than you might think. In 6v6 multiplayer, everybody's going to be within your optimal range to not have to worry about bullet drop. They're going to be close enough to where it's pretty easy to get chest up shots, and it's going to be a situation where I feel that you really need to aim down sights faster because your enemies will actually be able to see you and acquire you instead of picking off like little specks of dust in the distance. So 6v6 is probably the place to go for the Pellington, and I actually kind of like it for in-game and Warzone for similar reasons. In the last couple of circles of Warzone, I don't need a super heavy long-range sniper rifle. I just need something that I can snap on people and click heads with. It's not a strategy that I do often, but I do sometimes as needed. I don't have gameplay of that, and all the Warzone in-depths are probably going to be in a different series because all the stats are different, but subjectively speaking, it's decent for in-game Warzone, just not early game in Verdansk when you're trying to shoot all the way across the map. That's because the Tundra outclasses it for truly long-range sniping. That's true in Combined Arms, that's true in Dirty Bomb, that's true in Rebirth Island and in Verdansk. The Tundra, for Black Ops Cold War weapons, if you're going to do long-range sniping, the Tundra is just the way to go. The Pellington is just your fast sniper. The Tundra is going to outclass it in a lot of different ways. And don't forget, this is also the sniper rifle of choice if you want a quick scope. Quick scopers around the world do seem to enjoy the Pellington, 
And if I just absolutely have to quickscope for some kind of content reason, or I want to snipe, but I'm terrified of people rushing me and I want to have the ability to quickscope, Pellington is the way to go. Now, at the end of the episode, I'm going to show you my Pellington class, and mine's a very simple one. I think I'm running this very differently than most people. A lot of people like the eight attachment class. They like to load it down. I'm very comfortable with five attachments and taking perk greed, because to me, perk greed is one of the most important things in the game. The first attachment I put on there is the very basic 308 stabilizer. It just gives me additional idle sway control with absolutely no downsides whatsoever which is just lovely it's a pure bonus attachment and in my opinion those are very difficult to beat i do run the 26.5 inch tiger team barrel because it'll increase my one shot kill area slightly even if it's just the forearms it's a little bit more forgiving we get a little bit extra reload speed fire rate bullet velocity damage a little bit of everything and all we're really losing is ammunition which i can ref i can either run scavenger or i can go to the supply crates i use the fast loader so that I can reload 30% faster with no additional downsides. This is one of the few magazine-based attachments that don't have some sort of ADS-based downside, which is why I use it for most of the gameplay. The airborne elastic wrap is just the best for sniper rifles because of the aim down sight time bonus is huge. The flinch resistance is one of the most important things in this game, and it's one of the reasons that sniper rifles are so strong. And I can aim while going prone, so I can kind of like drop shot with snipers if I have to. The sprint to fire time isn't such a big deal to me because it's already very, very fast. And then finally, I like to run the marathon stock to get a little bit of additional sprint to fire time, even if it hurts my hip fire accuracy. It's just something that feels good to me. I really don't even need this additional attachment. This last attachment, you can make kind of whatever you wanted, but this one is what's most comfortable for me. And with those five attachments, I've put everything that's really important on the Pellington to make it perform to its maximum ability, and I'm just ready to go slay out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.